60 minutes, rewind. If ever there was a reluctant star, it's Jodie Foster. Despite two Oscars and her acclaim and influence, she has shunned celebrity. She doesn't like to give interviews or talk about her life, especially John Hinckley's obsession with her that led to his assassination attempt on President Ronald Reagan. But tonight, that's about to change. Recently, Jody sat down to talk for the first time about Hinckley, about her private life with a young son, Charlie, and about the one thing she wants most of all. I wish that I could live my life without knowing what it was to be famous. Um, yeah, that's the one, the, one, the one regret that I have. It definitely changes how I see the world. And if I could take that away, I think I would take that away. How, what, I mean, what? I still want to be successful. Yeah. I wouldn't want to not do that. And I still want to have the experiences that I had uh, with my work and professionally. Uh, the respect work. and all of that is great. Um, but what would privacy give you? I mean, what would an anonymity give you? Uh, a different connection with people, uh, more, more than anything else. Uh, a real connection. Jodie Foster was never given a choice. Oh, and I have lots of memories in this lot. She I has worked in television and film since she was three. Education. How are you different because you have been so mm -hmm. in the public eye? When you're an actor you, and you decide to be an actor at 22 or 23 years old, uh, usually the personality is, uh, I want people to notice me. And I want to sit in the front row and I want pictures to be taken of me and I want people to talk about how I look. Um, but when you've been in the business your entire life, uh, you safeguard your life uh, tremendously because uh, people are always trying to take it away from you. You're more private than most. Much more private uh, because from the time I was three or four or five years old, I've always you know, known that there were people coming at me or who wanted to know me or who knew my name already. Uh, it definitely brings out a certain personality. And the, you know, the, the, the negative side to that is that uh, you have to, you don't live as much uh, because you're a little more guarded about life. It's right over so this here. is the street. This is the Foster street lived here in the street. Hollywood Hills with her mother, two older sisters, and a brother. Her father walked out on the family. Jody became the breadwinner. Her closest friend was her mother. Andy Warhol, you knew Andy Warhol? Yes, I did. In his diaries. But there's wonderful thing about you, you and your mother. Me and my mom, yeah. Says so like a marriage. Yeah. And you were the father. Is that right? Yeah. It probably looked like, in some ways, that I took care of the family. And that was part of my personality, yeah. It's you. Yeah, but I assume responsibility for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I and mean, that's my, my M.O. She never knew her father. He left before she was born. What impact did that have? You know, none, because I've never known him. You know, that's why I sort of never talk about him, because he hasn't been a part of my life. So it would be like kind of giving credit to somebody who wasn't around. And you weren't even angry? No, because I didn't know what having one would be. Taxi Driver made Foster a major movie star at 13 years old. Despite her fame, she was savvy enough to know most child stars fade into oblivion. She decided to get a college education and enrolled at Yale University. The whole point was to get as far away from home as I could. Uh, far away from the film business and uh, just to go to a completely different atmosphere that was really academic. But the great thing was arriving at Yale and feeling like I was the dumbest person there and that they had made a huge mistake. <laughs> and that if they really looked down the records, it was like Julie Feaster and not Jodie Foster. Anonymity didn't last long. In 1981, John Hinckley shot President Reagan and others, including Press Secretary Jim Brady. Hinckley claimed he did it to impress the object of his obsession, Jodie Foster. For almost 20 years, she has adamantly refused to discuss it publicly. Very difficult March, time in my life. January. Tell me what you can tell me about that. Well, I don't like to dwell on it too much, only because I never wanted to be the actress who was remembered for, for that event, because it didn't have anything to do with me. I was kind of a hapless bystander. Uh, but, uh, you know, what a scarring, uh, strange moment in history for me to be 17 years old, 18 years old, and uh, to be caught up in a drama like that. Um, Everything on the campus changed. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, somehow I had, I had talked myself into thinking that maybe I was a little anonymous uh, and that I was like everybody else and that nobody was watching me. And uh, then, of course, 
you know, came the glare of all the cameras uh, trying to find me and hiding places and press conferences and paparazzis and um, just, uh, you know, all that stuff. Uh, and uh, it was a really hard time for somebody who's 18. Yeah, because of everything that you hoped. Yeah, and the self-consciousness and, uh, and, and, you know, if there's an opportunity to feel guilty, I'll find it. <laughs> Oh, no. So I can't. if there's an opportunity to feel guilty about something, I'll just so you, know, you said to yourself right somehow in. maybe there's some reason I did something that deserved to be the attention of this. Probably, yeah. Looking back, I'm sure there was a little bit of that. Uh, uh, but then also just feeling, I mean, I feel guilty about everybody else. I felt bad that I, you know, had to drag everyone else through it in my life. Did it change you though in terms of what you decided you wanted to do about acting, about your life, or about anything other than the worry and the guilt and all of that and whatever anger you had at Mr. Hinckley? Well, um, and may I just say, of course, my life, yes, was hurt and changed, but nothing like the life of Jim Brady. Yeah, <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, whatever bad moments that I had certainly could never compare to that family. Um, but yes, it uh, definitely influenced my future and how I thought about my work, why I do what I do, and how I wanted to shape my career. I mean, what were the answers that you came up with? Um, well, I, I probably, a part of me just didn't want to be a movie star. What I call a movie star with the, you know, quotation marks yeah. around it. Um, it's just being a celebrity for celebrity's sake, and that was something I didn't want to do. I knew I didn't want to do that because uh, that was the worst part of my job. That was the part I wanted to avoid. Uh, and I really, really wanted to make an effort that if I was going to be an actor, then I wanted to be, uh, uh, I want to be doing it for the right reasons. Foster says the most creative production of her life is her 16-month-old son, Charlie. Predictably, she is guarded about everything surrounding him. She will not publicly identify Charlie's father or discuss how she became pregnant. And she won't allow photographs with her son. But Foster did have to confront the issue of a father figure again, this time from the perspective of motherhood. Well, every person is different, and yeah. every set of experiences is different. And Charlie's experience in life will be very different than mine. Yeah. Um, but I don't think that there is any one perfect way to raise a family, and that there's any one perfect style of family. I think that uh, all of us are different, and that we all come with a different bag of tricks. Foster says she has never been more at peace. Perhaps that explains why this reluctant star is not so reluctant to provide new insights to what has happened in her life. What's happened to me in the later years is that I've become really selfish uh, because I never was when I was younger. And Because um, you were always slavish to the profession. That's right. It had to be a professional. And uh, now I've really learned that life comes first. 